our home and native land, Toronto's newest pulp culture podcast, covering your favorite comics, collectibles, media, nerdific origin stories, and more. Here it is, nerdos and nerdettes, Comics Sing! Hey guys, it's Sorel and Len, Jeff, and we are here with a quick recap of San Diego Comic Con 2018. So one of the, or actually two of the notable absences this year is the MCU and Game of Thrones. How do you guys feel about not having them around this time? Well, if they did, it would be a spoiler, right? With yeah. regards to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Hey guys, look at these movies. All these people are back alive. <laughs> yeah, it's best they took a year off. And, I mean, it's kind of a good break because then it's just like, you know, after this is done, I mean, Marvel might not be around, like, that often, especially with, like, the new phases and stuff. So you never know. But, I mean, especially in Game of Thrones, too, right? I mean, yeah. Game of Thrones is Until ending. the prequels come out. Ugh. Oh, that's going to be weird. I want, you know what I want to be a prequel? Um, an office comedy in the Iron Bank. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. They should do that. Who would be Michael Scott, though? The Michael Scott of the Iron Bank? <laughs> um, I don't even know the names of the guys at the bank. Just <laughs> so stuck up characters. dude one, stuck up dude two. You know, there was a lot of stuff that happened at Comic-Con, regardless of the MCU and Game of Thrones not being there. Um, one of the big things that kind of came out in TV was Titans. Are you guys excited for that? Yes. No. Yeah. Uh, if I was 16, Yes. I just, I saw the trailer and it's just kind of like, oh God, like this is like Arrow all over again where it's just like, why do we need to have them dark and broody and like. Plus more blood. And don't even get me started. Don't even get me started on like Robin with the Batman thing. It's just like, oh God. Yo, he's done with Batman. He's not having it. Like. (laughs) But like, wasn't it very Jason Todd of him, of Dick Grayson to do it? Like, I kind of. Yeah, that was a very Jason thing. Okay, to be honest, it excited me a little bit with the violence, but that's just because I'm a bit sadistic when it comes to my entertainment. But did he kill that's... those guys? Or uh, he shot just brutally, a guy like and... yeah, yeah. I think one guy's jaw is just now shattered, just like light murder. Yeah, <laughs> light murder. Make them wish that they were dead, and they'll finish the job <laughs> themselves. Well, I just so I didn't like how that's a good thought to leave that on. <laughs> I didn't like how this version of Raven was very like whiny because I mean. Whenever, when I watched Teen Titans, um, you know, Raven was always kind of like the Batman animated series version where she was just like, I'm cooler than you guys. And like, you guys know it and I know it. And she yeah. just seemed like really like, I don't know what to do with my powers. Yeah, kind of like. it's a complete opposite where one, as you said, she knows everything she's doing now. She knows nothing what she's doing. She's my chemical Raven, you know. I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> Jeff, so are you guys going to end up watching it on the DC the How are universe we gonna when watch it comes it? out? Yeah. We are in Canada. <laughs> oh, there so are it's not available ways. to us. <laughs> there are creative ways, my friend. Oh, no. I mean, I legally, mean... how are we going to watch it? I'm oh. aware there are other ways to watch it. But we're not going to do that illegally. Yeah, of course. Cops, if you're listening, comicsync.ca, <laughs> please subscribe. <laughs> so in other TV news, kind of another big one, too, um, we finally get a full trailer for Doctor Who Series 11. That's pretty exciting. It looks sick. Right? I, I I mean, like, do you guys, like, watch Doctor Who in any in any way? I've watched a single episode written by Neil Gaiman, and it was beautiful. That was it. Yeah, he does, like, really good stuff. But, um, so this is the first, like, or this is the one season where they don't have Stephen Moffat as the showrunner because now he is replaced by Chris Chibnall, who also wrote for Broadchurch and uh, Torchwood, which are both really great BBC One shows. So I have full faith in him. And also Jodie Whittaker, she just embodies that character really well. I don't care what the nerd bros think. They're just like, oh, she's got boobs. She can't be like the doctor. And I'm just like, the doctor is a time traveling alien who rides around in a British telephone box with like one or two companions each time. Like how? Like how is like having boobs just like the line for you to like not cross? Women can't be doctors. Are you crazy? We've been through this decades ago, bro. <laughs> this happened. 
like years ago and it's still happening years like even now but yeah i mean i'm i'm definitely excited and it's it's going to be a new take i unfortunately wasn't a fan of the peter capaldi season but this one seems really good so i've got high hopes um and then the last bit of tv talk um buffy is coming back hey so joss whedon is uh kind of taking the helm for it again and they're looking to cast a black lead uh how do you guys feel about that as buffy yeah. Okay. Yeah. I same universe? I think so. Same timeline? I think it's going to be like more modern and it's yeah, I mean like he the good thing with Joss Whedon that he did is he adapted the 90 1980s movie really well with like the 90s. Um so I thought that that was really cool, but I mean it's it's going to be really interesting to see if they're even going to bring members of the Scooby gang back. So like are we going to get, um, you know, Allison Hannigan's character, Willow? Are we going to get, like, that Spike love interest in Angel? It's – the thing is, like, the that the Buffy verse is it's still very new and fresh, and there's still comics that are being written about it. That's very true. <laughs> so, like, you know, how are you going to make it just with, like, a whole bunch of new characters now? So, I mean, cautiously optimistic, but we will see. We'll see. Obviously, the big reason – a lot of the big reasons why – San Diego Comic Con is a big thing is because there's a lot of movie trailers. Yes. So, Jeff, Len, any movie trailers you guys were excited for? Um, well, a big one to point out, I guess, would be Aquaman. Oh, uh, yeah. Making him look cool again. <laughs> it's like, was well, he ever cool? Yes. <laughs> he was cool. Yes. 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 He was. He, he still is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Come on. It's a pretty cool power. Yeah, no. And it's, it, it's one of those... Well, I mean, like, honestly, when you really think about it, like, the Earth is 70% water. Yes. So the fact that he could control 70% of the Earth is pretty terrifying. That's ter- not a laughing matter. No, it's yeah. pretty terrifying. Tidal waves. And the way that they show how underwater is like, it looks real fascinating right down there. You know, comparing that to downtown Toronto, which one would I rather be in for a day? Atlantis. Right now, I, I'm, I'm fine with underwater. <laughs> Did I say Atlanta earlier? Atlantis. Atlanta or Atlantis. <laughs> Yeah, the, Atlant- <laughs> the Atlantis. city of Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> the tone of the movie seemed really cool because it's like a high fantasy adventure flick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and the colors are cool. I feel like Mera really stands out just visually. Because the hair. The hair the, really bright, bright, bright red, bright green amongst gray stuff. I don't. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, just like, yeah, it just it, it's definitely visually a lot different of a take than batman versus superman Mm -hmm. just because it's it's it again it's a lot of colors and you know like the the sea life and like the water and stuff like it's very bright and vibrant and i like the atlantis like when they kind of showed it briefly because it was almost like a futuristic place right it terrible example but it kind of reminded me of jar jar banks's old like that's a terrible example (laughs) why do you go there i don't it just kind of reminded me i'm like i think i feel like i've seen this before (laughs) but uh yeah i mean i'm i'm excited we got a really cool look of black manta yeah and his big helmet yeah they made it work yeah, yeah, they did. So I'm I'm excited. So I've I've definitely got my high hopes. Are you guys gonna watch it for sure? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh yes. I mean James Wan directing sold. It didn't yeah. look much like a horror like we thought it would. No, look. but there could definitely be some horror elements in there. Yeah, a big scary with, ass like, looking ash. Yeah, shark. I mean with Black Manta or even like with um like the trench, like later on with all the big kind of sea monster stuff during the show. Well, yeah. just like this, um, anything that happens in the water is always kind of like any any time you go into the water, you yeah, just I mean, don't know what you're gonna get. Yeah, I mean the last shot, the last shot with the um, random like I guess, shark or whatever in the yeah. jaws, right? Um, in other DC news too, or in the DC, so it's not called the DC Universe anymore. Uh, Len, what is it called? It is called the Worlds of DC. Here to show you many different angles at our uh, at our multiple properties without them stepping on each other's toes creatively. <laughs> that was well said. I like it. <laughs> I like it. No, it's a much better idea to sort of step away from what like Marvel's doing so that DC can kind of do their own thing, right? Where they can they kind of tell more like contained, isolated stories as opposed to like worrying about like oh how this story is going to connect to the next one and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like a lot of. Sometimes with Marvel, you can tell this movie was a setup movie. It is not a movie for actually telling a thing. No, they're just selling me the next three movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what I like about DC sometimes, too, is, like, it's definitely, like, it feels like a standalone flick. It's not anything that leads up to another thing.
thing, but at the same time, it all still kind of manages to mesh well together. No, sometimes uh. not in like the like. I I won't say Batman v Superman because that was very <laughs> convoluted, but you know, Director's Cut was good, but yeah. yes. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited. Um, again, so Shazam, that was another Ooh. big trailer that came out. That looked fun. Did anyone else like not see Toronto in that? That was so Toronto. It was Toronto. Yeah, uh, yeah. You can't you can't help because you're, you're kind of just like oh like I know that neighborhood and yeah, it's just like I know the TTC. Oh, <laughs> that's where that guy once took a piss. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize that corner. It's still yellow. <laughs> Isn't that known as every stop in the TTC? <laughs> Oh. oh, and that's why you don't sit on the floor there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it looks it looks fun. I, I was very doubtful with the Zachary Levi casting, just because I've always recognized him as Chuck, uh, who just plays like a very lanky, like nerdy guy. So to kind of see him like bulked up for the role, it's it's actually pretty cool. Yeah, he still looks a little bit too bu- bulked up, as if that's not muscle, that's padding. Yeah. But he plays the character pretty fun-like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think Zachary Levi plays a plays plays him really fun. Jeff, He's flossing. You're, you're yeah, <laughs> the floss yeah, no, I definitely. <laughs> He's a kid, so it makes sense. But no, I mean, yeah, I definitely. Um, I like the tone of the movie. You um, know, definitely looks fun, lighthearted. Um, you also kind of like Aquaman as well. This uh, clearly takes off of uh, Jeff Johns' like New Fifty Two uh, run on the character. Um, they learned a lot from Jeff. It's yeah, as if he's involved. <laughs> I know, right? As if he yeah. has some sort of a say in what these movies are. But um, yeah, no, I'm I'm very excited for it. So Shazam, are you guys going to see this? Yes. Yeah, Jeff? I mean, I, I will have to see it. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of sometimes I like Captain Marvel slash Shazam more than I do Superman, mm-hmm. honestly, because he's Superman, but also he's funny. Yeah. 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 Superman like was a personality. <laughs> yeah <laughs> superman you... can have a personality too you just look at him as you know uh midwest american jesus i like that midwest american <laughs> jesus that's, that's how like, i see him that's like the best thing ever um so in other trailer news now kind of more shifting to monsters godzilla king uh king of the monsters finally released a trailer i know jeff was very happy when he saw it I was yes. I I got uh, visually vi- visually. What am I trying to say here? I was moved in a sense. In more ways. Than in more <laughs> ways than I should have been. Can one of you do an impression of Jeff as he was li- watching the trailer? Well, I was there with him when he was watching the yes, trailer. Yes, please describe my body as I saw. <laughs> Rodan and <laughs> well, just at the end with the the Godzilla like shriek or roar, like as soon as it went silent, you just hear, oh. <laughs> and you're you're kind of just like sitting there, you're just like, okay, someone, I need to excuse myself. <laughs> someone definitely likes monsters. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for this. Don't. It's not a joke. But Yo, yeah, once no, this once the Swamp Thing trailer comes out, I'm gonna have that same thing. Yeah, then you can relate. You'll know exactly what. Yeah. I'm we just we need a whole bunch of like the crew just reacting to their favorite trailers and at just the end of it just going, Ugh. <laughs> it's like the trailers that make you go. Ugh. <laughs> I need new pants. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, this looks pretty cool. Like I, I like the first Godzilla. Jeff, did you like it? I did like the first Godzilla. Yeah. Did you watch um, Kong Skull Skull Island? I did actually. I watched it with you, and uh, yeah, I liked it a lot. <laughs> Cyril, how can you not remember? Yeah, I was there as well. I remember. It's easily forgettable. Did I watch it? Oh, Ooh. okay. We can take this off podcast. <laughs> so obviously, King of the Monsters. So there's obviously more monsters. Godzilla is the this. king, but yes. Um, which one are you kind of looking forward to the most in, in the... seeing kind of live action? Uh, I mean, all three honestly. Like Mothra is cool. Um, Rodan, especially uh, King uh, Ghidorah, the uh, three-headed like dragon guy. Um, who I guess he's kind of going to be, I guess, the main villain, I guess, of the um, the movie, since he's the most powerful. But, like, for him, he can basically, like, if he flaps his wings, he can cause, like, hurricanes, and he's, like, a world breaker, pretty much. Well, like, yeah, when you, there's one clip, it's more like a blink and you'll miss it, where he was just kind of flying over, and it's just, like, a whole bunch of the power went out, and it was a weird, like, wave of, like, power outage, which was kind of cool. Going back to superheroes again, there was another trailer that came out for M. Night Shyamalan's The Glass, for Glass, not The Glass, but The Glass. 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 So... It's definitely different than, like, the superhero movies that we're used to. But, I mean, are you guys excited for it? Yes. I feel 
Did this have se- uh, prequels to this? Oh, it did. Yeah, yeah it I had, have not yeah. seen. Because of course it had the original Unbreakable. Yes, so and spoilers. then yeah, and then Split came out.